Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I want to talk about Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous just received a very, very substantial patch in the form of the Fleet Carriers that came out last week, and I've been really enjoying my time with it. Uh, I've been looking forward to Fleet Carriers for a long time, even though there were some parts of it that I wish could be improved. I'm overall having a really, really good time. One of the things I want to talk about today is just how, how many players have been mining. Low temperature diamond mining has been a big, big credit making venture for a very long time. When Frontier announced that they were going to have a maintenance patch, a lot of us, including myself, were anticipating the possible nerf to subsurface drilling. If you don't know what that is, that is a form of mining where you drill uh, uh, not completely through the rock. Not you don't, you don't make it explode, but you just drill deeper to get more nodes. As of the fleet carrier patch, the subsurface drilling was significantly buffed to the point to where some people were, were reporting they were getting 100 tons of low temp diamonds on a single asteroid, which is just insane. So we kind of figured, I know I kind of figured that Frontier would have to nerf this. It was way, way too lucrative uh, compared to other, other money making uh, ventures in the game, even just normal low temp diamond laser mining, which used to be king. So here are the patch notes uh, of the update that came out this morning. Uh, and the, the main thing I want to focus on is the mining part. There were some, some crashes and fixes and some really, really welcome bug fixes as well in this patch. But here's the thing. There's two parts to this and both are fairly important. The first point says reduce the large possible yield when subsurface mining for low temperature diamond by around 25%. So large possible yield. Yield. That means that when you hit a subsurface node, you can possibly get a really, really large return. And some people will get 20 to 30 tons of low temp diamonds per yield. So this has been dramatically reduced. Well, I, I'm not gonna say dramatically. It's been reduced by 25%, which in all honesty is not that much. So this is not that big a deal if you ask me, because okay, I, I got a hundred tons of low temp diamonds from the rock now i'll get about 75 whoop de doo you know that's not a big that's not a huge deal at all so that's not a big nerf even though people think it may be i think the second part of this is probably the most important it's probably going to affect more people than the first part is that it de they decrease the effectiveness of the peripheries of low temperature diamond hotspots overlapping hotspots for low temperature diamonds when coupled with the new subsurface mining changes were more effective than the center of the hotspot itself this change in increases the drop off of the hotspots ring, reducing the likelihood that a double overlap hotspot is more lucrative than the, either of the hotspots center points. A well-placed triple hotspot will still be very effective at increasing the likelihood of finding low temperature diamonds. This change does not affect any other hotspots or minerals. So this is strictly for low temperature diamonds hotspots. So what does that mean? That means that you're gonna have to be a little bit more precise when you drop in to a low temperature diamond ring no longer will you be able to just go anywhere in the overlapping hot spots of those low temperature diamond spots the center points are going to be the most effective so what does that mean for the current triple hot spot that means that if you drop in a spot where all three overlap and it's not in any center point of any of those hot spots then it's going to be less diamonds than you think it is even so uh i've been doing some light testing and like on, on the surface it does sound like this is going to be kind of dramatic but i've been doing some light testing and i kind of figured that it wouldn't make too much of a difference i filled my python which had 128 tons of cargo in 30 minutes so that's about what 150 i, I can't math right now but it's like 150 million worth of diamonds approximately i guess if i get 1.7 it might be a little higher in 30 minutes so in an hour i get double that i get 300 million per hour that's just some rough calculations there and i've seen some other reports on reddit of people were similar i think some guys say he got 440 440 tons when he went to the center the direct center of a hot spot so it looks like the centers of the hot spots may have gotten a little bit of a buff yet to be confirmed but the overall effectiveness of having a triple hot spot is going to be less in the end this might be a better change overall because i think honestly i think everything was broken i think the way things were before this patch it was just completely utterly broken it was insane people were making billion 
credits like every three hours. It was it was it was really, really broken. I knew that they were going to have to make some kind of adjustments, but still, even if they nerfed it by 50 percent, I think that's what I said on my live stream yesterday. If they nerf it by 50 percent, it's still going to be really, really good. So they nerfed the effectiveness of the surface mining by 25 percent and the overlapping hotspots have a different type of behavior. So only time will tell is if this is going to make a huge difference. But I can tell you this. It makes me want to just go to a normal hotspot, not a triple hotspot and just go right in the middle and see what type of yield I get. Because at this particular hotspot, uh, the one out, the new Baran, as people have been calling it, if you go to the center of the middle one, you're only going to get the outskirts of the other two. So in essence, uh, I think a majority of, of your yield is going to come from going to that center of that first one. And then you'll get a little bit of buff because there's going to be more drop off from the other two. You're going to get a little bit of a buff from the other two. It gives me some motivation to go test just a normal hotspot to see if the center is just, just that much better. And if that's the case, this is the good news in all this. If that's the case, then that's going to make finding a good mining spot really, really easy. It's going to, you're no longer going to have to go to all these different triple hotspots to get good mining spots. If you just find a normal low, temp low temperature diamond hotspot and go to the middle, and if tests prove that you'll get a really good yield, I think a lot more people are going to be happy. You'll be able to mine in a lot more places. And it won't be all these big, these big spots where there's billions of fleet carriers and stuff like that. Even though that's kind of exciting, even though that, that's kind of exciting, you know, that there won't be a lot of, of those gatherings. So, Overall, this change isn't terrible. Uh, I still I'm making 300 million approximately an hour in my Python. Um, that, that's still that's still too much. It, it, it kind of leads to another point where we really need to buff the other methods. And I talked about this in my live stream. Other people have been talking about it. It reminds me of a game I used to play called Marvel Heroes by Gazillion. And in Marvel Heroes, Spider-Man was overpowered. When they came out with a Spider-Man re rework, Spider-Man was super severely overpowered he was just like destroying everything so rather than nerf spider-man what gazillion did was that they buffed the entire roster of heroes everybody else got buffed to meet spider-man's level it was a lot more work but in the end they got a lot more people to play that game and it was a lot more fun it was incredibly fun so if frontier could do something similar i think a lot of us wish they would buff combat that they would i, th I think exploration is in a good spot but if they could buff it a little bit more to match mining that would be great too and missions you know missions need to be need to be a, a little bit consistent consistent too now i'm a i'm a year one player i played in beta so i realized how much better the credits are now than back then uh i think the big problem right now is just the big gap between the top level form of making credits and the lowest level of making credits the lowest level of making credits has the highest risk in combat and the highest form of making credits has no risk which is mining so i think that should be kind of reversed i think it's completely backwards but that's neither here or there hopefully frontier will heed this feedback a lot of people not not just me but there's a lot of people saying that there needs to be a buff to combat combat needs to be buffed combat needs to be buffed combat needs to be buffed because it's so so unfair to have to risk your ship and get the least amount of credits this is born from one.tv i'm having a great time i've been playing a lot of elite dangerous lately i've been flying my fleet carrier we've been doing all kinds of stuff so come by my live stream at buona.live and check us out uh we, we went out to the guardian site we did some farming of the guardian fsd drive for the bunch of new people we've been ferrying people out uh to the to the ltd3 hotspot with this change you may not need to do it but i'm having so much fun waking up wanting to mine wanting to do other stuff engineering again so i think fleet carriers breathe a little bit of new life into elite dangerous and possibly could hold us over uh until odyssey comes out so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave you with the session of my python uh mining mining for uh the low temperature diamonds this is where i got a full hold in about 30 minutes you can watch it from start to finish uh, i'll time lapse it so it doesn't uh so it doesn't uh bore you to tears but enjoy the footage and you all have a great day i'll see you next time Bye bye